Hey, I'm Fireball Tim, and welcome to the first annual world-class automotive film and arts festival. Don the Snake Brudel. He's faster, Snake or Mongoose? Snake. Ladies and gentlemen, Robin Brody, producer of the film, come on over. So, um, doing a film like this is very different than, than something like what we just saw with 32 hours, 7 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, story and, and I come from a whole uh, writer's family so I know that there's a tremendous amount of work that's involved in that but you guys had access uh, to something that's unique and that is that you had access to Tom and Don uh, how integral were they in the uh, uh, in the production of these? well as you know this the story comes first and we had this amazing story of two drag, drag racers who are not only friends our rivals but also dear friends and I thought it was fascinating. How, how do you be a best friend to your biggest rival? Um, so first you start with that story, and then we were very blessed that in 19, I mean in 2006, um, Mattel wanted to do a 35th anniversary tribute to them, and he, they hired an automotive writer named Alan Paradise. I know Alan. To interview yeah, sure. them for hours and hours at a time yeah. so that he could create this tribute video. And after meeting them and spending so much time with them, he decided he wanted to write a biography about them. Right. And then he realized it was more cinematic than a bio, and so he turned it into a script. And if, as a producer, that's the first thing that you see. Right. Right. You see a script, and um, it starts there. If the script is great and has all that heart and soul and story and mm -hmm. impact and pathos and tragedy and love and loss, sure. and it's got everything. Sure. Something I think that this, this movie really uh, um, uh, is unique in that it has access to these guys because a lot of movies like this, especially biographies, uh, usually come after someone has passed on. Right. And uh, um, so you have to interpret things, right. you know, as to kind of what happened and talk to people as a, to get a feeling. But this is, this is really true to life. I mean, they, those guys were there saying, no, that didn't happen this way. Okay, so, so typically a biography of one person who's dead, mm -hmm. that's one level of complexity. Sure. Now let's say you have a biography of two people. Well, that's another level of complexity. But what if they're both alive and they don't agree about anything? <laughs> Not one thing. That's okay. Quite a How about to get this? Done. How about this? The first, the first, bre the first lunch my husband and I had with them. Don says to me, "You know, we had a pretty racy, you know, side life over there. You know, this movie's gonna have to be an R." And Tom jumps out of his seat. What are you talking about? This is for the five-year-old Hot Wheels set. You can't make it an R. I looked at my husband and I went, "Oh my God, we have to make a G-rated R movie. How are we gonna do that?" And it was like that the whole yeah, time. Yeah, so it's finding the middle ground with every aspect. There was not one thing they agreed about. Right. <laughs> so and, and which car did you like best? Of the four cars? Mm -hmm. of, the, of the red and yellow? Mm -hmm. or the, or the um, I don't know. I, I liked them all. I really did. I thought they were all gorgeous. I loved the Greer Black Perdome. That yellow dragster at the beginning of the film. That's a nice story, too. Um, we borrowed that from a very famous car collector named Bruce Meyer. And uh, we thought we were just going to put it on the, on the set and right. just shoot it around and around it, you know. Sure. And then maybe use footage to make it look like it was moving. And one day, Snake came to me and he said, how'd you like it if I made that car go? And I said, oh my god, he, you can't, it's broken. <laughs> he said, I can make that thing run in 15 minutes. What sure. do you think you're talking to? Sure. <laughs> that, that you shot for 24 days? Yes. What, what was one of the, the biggest challenges that you had as a producer, personally? Well, you're shooting in a very short period of time to mm -hmm. do a, you know, an hour and 40 minute movie. Um, so, you know, you have to try and get crammed so much into, a, into the day. And every day is an expensive day, so you don't want to add days at the yeah. end of the schedule. So, so it's always money conscious. Yeah, you, ha you have to be, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, of all the scenes that 
uh, that you shot, and obviously you shot a lot more than we actually saw there. Uh, is there anything that stood out for you as being one of those things? Which, you know, because when you have Don and, and Tom around, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they're talking to you, saying things like these. I, I read in the, in the bio some of the information about the fact that they felt like they were being transported back in time. Of course. You know, because everything was being replicated, but it was unusual. I think it was just more, obviously it was more difficult for Tom mm. than it was for Don. Because Tom was reliving a horrible period of right, his life. Right. Um, Alan chose to focus on it because it is such a memorable highlight of the U.S. Nationals history. But for Tom to go through that again was pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so people ask me what my favorite scene is in the movie, and um, these two these two brilliant actors. I thought Jesse and Richard did a fantastic sure. job. Sure. They shot that post-funeral scene. The at the end of the very first week, uh. which is pretty fast, just yeah. to be into it that deeply. And they shot the Mattel scene, which I love, that's my second favorite scene, right. on the first day. Ah. <laughs> so, those were fun to watch. Yeah, that's interesting. And it was very trans it was very emotional for Tom. And, and Don just, just, you know, John's a perfectionist. Don, you know, was very anxious the whole time. You know, things had to be right, and he was very concerned that it wasn't going to be good. Did Alan bring the script to you? Is that how? Alan brought know? the script to a, a friend of mine named Stephen Nemeth, uh -huh. who produced things like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and Why Do Fools Fall in Love. I think I remember talking to Alan four or five years ago right. when he told me that right. he was first starting. So he, yeah, he was working with Stephen for a while and then Stephen found me mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to make it. I just, mm -hmm. I loved the script. Yeah. So what's the plan now? Is this your first festival? It is. It's not my first festival. Okay. I, I, did a, I did a short uh, a couple of years ago called Mayhem that went into about 20 festivals. But the first one for, the, for this film? Yes, this is the first festival. We actually opened first in, in theaters in Jul right. Reno and Detroit. Okay. Uh, so, but yeah, I thought, I just didn't think of this as a festival type film, right. you know, like, like Sundance or Toronto or Telluride. Well, we're, we're very grateful. We're, we're but for an automotive this. film festival, I thought it was perfect. The cars you own are the, the main cool thing, aren't they? Um, we're going to uh, give the audience a chance to ask you some questions. Is there anybody out there that would like to do that? Ask Robin a couple of questions. I was really curious, did the actors doing the, the actual people they were portraying, um, were they able, did they start acting more like, I mean, offset, did they start acting more like the, the guys that are it was, it was really, you know, obviously it was a double-edged sword having, like I said, two, two live legends who could contradict each other. But they were also invaluable because the actors got to spend a lot of time with them both before the shooting started and throughout the shooting. And so Jesse and, and Tom and Don spent a lot of time, you know, with Don explaining to him exactly how he smoked, exactly how he walked, exactly how he talked, exactly what he would have been saying and feeling at any given time, discussing the script, rewriting. It was very intense for both Richard and Tom uh, as well. Richard went down to Anaheim where, where Tom lives six weeks in a row for a whole day and saw every place he lived, every place he worked, every place he, you know, had his cars, you know, sitting in museums or whatnot, and he spent time with all of his friends. You can learn a lot when you're hearing stories from friends. And I think Richard got a lot of insight into Tom by doing that. And, and then one more. How difficult was it to get collectors and, and people who had these, these automobiles that, they, that these guys built? The How willing were they to, to lend them for the project? Well, first of all, a good portion of those cars came from Don's garage, from Snake Racing. The, the yellow haulers and the Hot Wheels funny cars and all that, he restored them. And we couldn't have done the movie unless he'd spent the years in advance of making the movie to restore them. Um, the Army cars were all there. The Shelby Cobra came from him. The, and then Don is the one that got Bruce Meyer to give us the Greer Black Prudhomme. Don Trayson gave us that English leather Corvette, and uh, the rest of the cars came from collectors who were very anxious and happy to give it to us. So it was not a hard thing to do to collect the cars. It just was a lot of time and effort. That sounds like a really cool garage. I think we should head over Amazing. there next. There's a, there's a, a YouTube video. Oh, I'm sure, it, oh yeah, it's not. It doesn't show Snake's garage, it's Jay's garage. Anyway, yeah, if you get a, a couple of years ago, or last year, Don had a 40th anniversary of his career, 
and he op or 50th anniversary, and he opened up his garage to an open house. He does it about every 10 years, so you might have to wait another wow, very time. Cool. But anyone else have a question for Robin? Okay, what what do you have coming up? What is it? Uh, what's your next project that you're going to be working on? Can I ask a question of the audience as long as I'm here? Of course. <laughs> Did, did you like it? Did, any, yeah. any, any surprises about this movie? Anybody? It was, it was more heartwarming than I would have thought. Great. It was more personal. Right. I, I, again, that's what I, when I showed it to the ESPN guys and the, and the Source Interlink Hot Rod Carcraft guys, I started my conversation with them by saying, you know their whole history of drag racing. That's not going to be interesting to you. You know the whole story. What's interesting to me and should be to you is what drove them? You know, what was their personal lives like? How did they help each other or inspire each other or so that? I, and they really, th they did like it. In fact, they told me later, you know, we learned a lot. We didn't know. It's a great story of friendship. That's and, what and I bottom think. Line. Being there for one another. Right. And the, the goal now with the film is distribution? So um, we released it in Reno and Detroit and we'll be in Indy in a couple of weeks. And then after Labor Day, we're opening it wider in, uh, you know, it could be six cities, it could be 20 cities. It'll depend on how the film is doing. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Big hand for Robin. Thank you.